depend upon the, the preacher to get them out of trouble. There's too many people in the church that's looking to the answer to a deacon board or an elder board or trying to get a pastor who may be right with God or may not be right with God to try to straighten your situation out. But can I tell you tonight that James 1 and 5 says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God to give her to all men liberally and you can go to God and ask Him yourself for your answer. He'll give it to you. He desires a personal relationship with you. That's right. And He desires that you seek out His wisdom in all the avenues of your life. Proverbs says, listen, forsake the foolish and live. Boy, ain't that a deep, I mean, that's a whole night's worth of preaching right there. Huh. Forsake the foolish and live. Now what does that tell me? That tells me that there is death in the foolish. That tells me that there is destruction in the foolish. That tells me that when you're careless and you're foolish with your life, you're walking off into a place of disruption. You're walking off into a place of death. You're walking off into a corrupt place. You're walking off into a place of pit, if you want to call it, of trouble. But David says, I thank God that He lifted my feet up out of the fiery clay and He placed me on the rock to stay. In other words, if you turn to God, He'll pick you up out of the fiery muddy place you're at and He'll plant you on a firm foundation. He'll plant you on His promises of His Son Jesus Christ. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. There's that understanding again. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Understanding something for what it is. You know, I, I can look at I can look at a computer. I know to turn it on. And I know the monitor comes on. And I, I didn't have computers growing up in high school, so all the folks that are my age has learned, had to learn to... We blew up three or four of them before we ever got where we could kind of use one of them. You know what I'm talking about, Missy? Yeah. None of us went to school on it. We just point and click, point and click, and then a virus comes, we had to get somebody to come fix it. And finally, it gets so bad, we had to throw it away and go buy another one. Then we start on it. It takes us a little while, but we managed to tear that one up. I look at that computer and I do not understand how it works on the inside. My son-in-law does. I mean, he, he's eight one. He knows everything there is to know about computers. He's got a computer business of his own. I mean, if it, he knows what he's doing. But I can tell you this. If he had a transmission sitting out on a bench somewhere and he was looking at it, He'd be calling daddy-in-law. Because you know why? Because he has an understanding of the inner workings of a computer that I don't have that knowledge and I've got the knowledge of the inner workings of an automatic transmission that he don't have. I don't guess you have. I don't know unless you've learned something of that since I've been. <laughs> but you see, that word understanding is simple. It means whenever you're able to put together a concept of ideas that you understand how and why something works the way it does. It's no different with God's wisdom and understanding. Because when you ask God to give you wisdom in a certain situation, and you will open your heart and open your spiritual ears and open your spiritual eyes, God will give you the understanding of what is happening in that situation. Amen? I know He will. I know He will. Because I'm going to tell you, it not only works for the spiritual, but it works for the natural. You wouldn't believe how many transmission problems I've fixed because I went in the bathroom and prayed and asked God, give me the understanding, Lord, I don't know what's going on with this thing. And God would show me. Oh, you know, I mashed a few fingers and spilled a lot of fluid on myself, but eventually God would lead me in the right direction. You see, you can ask for God's wisdom in every single place of your life. It does not matter where it's at. 
You can have got yourself in debt head over heels to where you can't stand it and you bought all the books of Clark Howard and Dave Ramsey and all them guru guys and watch that crazy woman on TV, what's her name, that gets on there and does all that with Oprah. You can watch all of them. Susie. Yeah, Susie. But listen, there ain't nobody can help you in life like the Holy Spirit. Amen. He will lead and guide you in the right direction if you will open your heart and say, God, give me the understanding of the situation. Now listen, God may show you the understanding of the situation and you may be shocked. It may be something that you don't want. But God will give you the answer because He's faithful. He gives you and I the understanding of everything in our life if we'll just go to Him and ask Him. That's a promise of Him. This is why Solomon would say, listen, Solomon was a smart man. He wasn't no dummy. He didn't ask God for riches. He asked God for wisdom. And buddy, God poured it out on him. You remember what I said last week? That, that God's wisdom, and it says that, that in His right hand is length of days. And in his left hand is riches and honor. In other words, if you will seek out God's wisdom, you will seek out His understanding, there will be length to your days here on this earth. And along with that wisdom, you'll begin to make... Listen, it's more than positive thinking. I know we had people that's come out and said, well, if you'll just say positive things and have positive thoughts, you'll have a positive life. Well, listen, if you don't put Christ in the middle of that, if you don't put your faith on the cross, you're going to be positive but the negatives are coming. And whenever it hits you, it's going to knock you down. You've got to have a rock. You've got to have the foundation to stand on. You've got to have Christ and Him crucified on that cross to, to understand that He is your anchor point. That's why He told us over there in the Scripture that, hey, He's not impressed with the fast strength of a horse. He's not impressed with the swift legs of a man. But He's impressed. He delights. He's tickled over those that will go to Him and say, yes, Lord, I put my faith in what You did for me on Calvary and I stand upon that. And Lord, I'm asking You to give me wisdom. I'm asking You to give me understanding. I'm asking You to give me knowledge. And God said, now there is somebody that I can pour it out on. And He'll pour it out upon you if you'll just ask Him for it. He says, <laughs> Oh Lord, He that reproves the scorn giveth to himself shame. And he that rebuketh the wicked man giveth himself a blot. But listen to what He says. Reprove, reprove not a scorn lest he hate thee. Listen to this. He says, Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. We don't like it when anybody gets on to us about something, do we? Sometimes the truth does more than hurt. It makes us mad, don't it? I can say that is the ugliest, pinkest shirt I have ever seen in my life that Frank's got on back there. <laughs> When listen, when you got perfect skin tone, uh, when you man on the light, we're about matched here. We're outdoors a whole lot, man. Frank too, but if if you rebuke somebody that is, doesn't have a relationship with God. And you get on to that person about something. And I'm not talking about being mean to them. I'm talking about saying, hey, you know, what you're doing is not right. A scornful person, a, 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 a wicked person, most of the time will get mad at you. They'll cuss you. They'll cuss you. They'll let you have it. But, but, but a, a child of God, a wise man or a wise woman, somebody that's growing, somebody that's growing in the Lord. The reason I say this is because somebody got mad at me here last Thursday night because I mentioned smoking. Because I said something other about don't have me come pray for you at the hospital if you're dying of cancer from smoking. I tried to tell you. Oh, I feel it right there. <laughs> but somebody here last week got mad at me about that. But listen, let me tell you something. A wise person might say, I don't like what he said, but it's the truth. Amen. 
a wise person will take a rebuke. And believe me, I've had some. I've had people come to me and say, what you're doing is not right. What you said is not right. I had the Lord rebuke me here a few months ago. I was up here preaching one night and kind of got out on the, the fringe edge and I said some things that, that I shouldn't have said in front of these children. Nobody in this congregation said nothing to me. But that truck ride home, buddy, the Lord let me have it all the way back to the house. And I had to say, you know, I could have said, Not me, Lord, I'm a preacher! I've got them in the palm of my hand. Lord, did you hear me get out on the edge? They'll love me. They'll say, oh, listen to Pastor. He got out on the edge. Now that's an arrogant cuss that would do that. And I know a few preachers that are like that because they think they've greatest things since sliced bread. 